Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. I extend warm greetings to everybody that's watching live via YouTube. I'm sure you've been blessed so far by today's service and I'd like to go into the word of God that he's laid on my heart for today. So we're going to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 9 and I'm going to be reading from verse 8 through to 17. Genesis chapter 9 verse 8 through to 17. And I'm reading from the New King James Version, so it may differ from whatever you have at your home. The scripture says, Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, As for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is, is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I will set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. I shall be, it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud, and I will look onto it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time to come together in a virtual fashion. We thank you that you are here in the midst of us, even as your word declares that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst of us. And Father, even as we're gathered virtually, we thank you for your presence that is with us wherever we're watching and viewing right now. Father God, we pray that a tangible anointing would just minister to all of us, Father God, that you would speak to us. Let everything that be done tonight be spirit and life, that the flesh would have no profit and that the name of Jesus would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to speak this afternoon from the subject, the rainbow still belongs to God. The rainbow still belongs to God. Before I even begin to lay the foundation, I'd like to just give some context to the message. As we go into the scripture, and as we go to Genesis, the book of beginnings, we see in Genesis chapter 1 to 3 how God created the world and everything that is in it. We see the creation of man and also we see the fall of man into sinful living. It's important to note that sin is not static. I repeat, sin is not static. It doesn't just manifest itself and then all of a sudden stop there. The truth is, the more sin gets, the more it wants. Sin has an insatiable appetite. Sin wasn't satisfied when Adam and Eve had sinned in the garden. Certainly Satan was happy when he caused them to sin and when they disobeyed God, but sin wasn't satisfied with that. It wanted more. 
So even after Adam and Eve had sinned and then they were excommunicated out of Eden, out of the garden of God, sin still desired to manifest itself. So then we know that Adam and Eve continued in the mandate that God had given them to be fruitful and multiply, and multiply they did. And they gave birth to two sons, Cain and Abel. But yet sin still wanted to manifest itself in the earth and in humanity. And so we read about Cain killing Abel in Genesis chapter 4. Now we skip along a couple of chapters and when we get to Genesis chapter 6, we see that the insatiable appetite of sin continued to manifest itself through humanity to the point that God looked upon man and he said, when I look at man, I see that the thoughts and the meditations of man are continually evil and that man had given itself over to wickedness to continually do that which was evil. So now God decides that he would destroy the earth and its inhabitants but yet in the midst of all of the wickedness that was going on in the earth, God still found one man and his household which he could save who had chosen to obey God. And therefore we read now about Noah and his family and how, Noah, and how God gave Noah the commandment to build an ark that would be the saving of his household and then also to bring in a, um, a select number of the various animals into the ark such that when the flood came upon the earth, they would be spared and, the, and, and they would not be destroyed. So God now in, in Genesis chapter 8, we see that the flood came and with the flood came the destruction of of uh, the inhabitants of the earth that were not in the ark with Noah. So now when we come to Genesis chapter 9, God speaks to Noah and his sons as to what they should do to now replenish the earth. So now I want to begin to lay a foundation for this message. The rainbow still belongs to God. Understand firstly that God knows humanity. God knows humanity. Secondly, he loves humanity. And thirdly, he wants humanity to know him and to love him. So as we read the Old Testament, and there are a plethora of examples that I could go to, but one of the common themes as we read through the Old Testament is God continuously going out of his way to help humanity know him, love him, and to follow him. When we read in the Old Testament about the tabernacle, we understand that God gave the model of the tabernacle such that the tabernacle would be a place of meeting with him, that the people of God would know God, even as he already knew them. We often read about uh, great men of faith such as uh, Moses and we read about Abraham and the, and the encounters and the revelations that they had with God and yet the purpose behind it was so that God, um, so that they would know God, that they would love him, that they would follow him and that the stories of, of his greatness and of his goodness would travel down from generation to generation by word of mouth the goodness of God was spread from one generation to another generation because God wanted his people to know him. So the stories pass on from generation to generation. We read through the Old Testament and then we read through the New Testament and what we find in the scriptures as we go through the Bible, we find many symbols and many emblems that are associated with God. And there are a number of sacred symbols in Christianity and sacred emblems that many of us are familiar with. You know, you have things like the cross, uh, the dove, bread, wine, and we hear a lot about many of these emblems. If we're talking about communion, when we talk about communion, we talk about the bread. The bread represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. When we speak about the, the wine, it represents the shed blood of Christ when we take communion. When we look at the cross, the cross represents the death and the sacrifice of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And then if we look at the, the dove, the dove represents uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. But now when we talk about the rainbow... We don't often hear much about the rainbow as a sacred symbol and emblem of Christianity. We don't really hear much about it. 
and yet it is a very sacred symbol and emblem of our faith. So I want to give some understanding with regards to the rainbow because there are many people today who are in the faith and they will see a rainbow and they just see the beauty of the rainbow but they don't understand the, the magnific magnificence and the spiritual significance of the rainbow. They'll just appreciate it and appreciate that it's in the sky and some may have read the scriptures to know that God said he would give the rainbow but they do not know any more beyond that. But I believe it's God's desire that we understand what we are seeing when we see the rainbow. So today we see the rainbow being used in many different ways. And humanity has taken the rainbow and taken the colors of the rainbow and they've been used in many diverse ways. If we um, look at it how it's looked at today when we look at the rainbow, the rainbow is often used today to represent the diversity of man as it pertains to sexuality. The LGBT community for years has used the symbol of the rainbow to, um, to show their diversity um, and, their, and their diverse sexuality amongst their community. But God would have it be known and make it very clear that biblically, the rainbow has no sexual connotation to it, it but it has very strong spiritual connotations. The rainbow is not a man-made creation and neither is it a scientific creation. Yes, man, as men we get to witness the beauty of the rainbow when we see it in the sky and it certainly is a beautiful sight to behold and science can explain to us the technicalities of the rainbow and how it's formed but the creator of the rainbow is God Almighty himself. In the book of Revelations, chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, it says, Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven. And one sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Revelation 10, verse 1 says, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet were like pillars of fire. We need to understand, firstly, that the heavenly realm and the angelic realm existed long before the earthen realm existed. And yet we read in the scripture that the rainbow existed around the throne of God and still exists around the throne of God before the earth was ever created. God said in the book of Genesis chapter 9 and verse 13, he said this, he said, I set my rainbow in the cloud. I repeat, my rainbow in the cloud. That's to say that God was intent on making a very clear distinction between his rainbow and any other kind of rainbow that people would create and want to use. Hallelujah. So the LGBT community, we know this, they use the rainbow as their symbol. And if they want to use it as their symbol and put it on their flags, fine, they can do that. If they want to put it on their buildings to identify their buildings, fine, they can do that. When they have their pride march, they want to put the rainbow there, fine, they can do that. But let it be known that even if they want to use the rainbow that way, there's only one person who can put the rainbow in the cloud, and that is God Almighty himself, and cannot do that. So what's the significance of the rainbow? Now we understand firstly that from a scientific point of view, without rain there can be no rainbow. Without rain there can be no rainbow. It's rain that helps to bring the revelation of the rainbow when the sun begins to shine. So first we see that it rains. And then after the rain has descended, the sun then begins to shine. And when the sun shines, the rainbow is revealed for us to see. So we must understand now, as the children of God, the spiritual significance of the revealing of the rainbow. Now, firstly, rain has very strong spiritual significance. Why? Because rain represents revival and renewal of life. The sun represents light, which speaks of illumination and revelation. And now the rainbow itself really is a representation of God himself. Now I want to go one level further. So when we look at this now, this process of how the rainbow is revealed, we see the rain come, and then following the rain, the sun begins to shine, and when the sun shines, it reveals the rainbow. Now this is what God desires to happen in our services. 
Step one, as the church, we should know how to worship and praise God with, um, in, in such a way that it creates a spiritual atmosphere and a climate that causes it to reign. When we talk about reign in a service, we talk about the anointing of God, the glory of God coming into a service to affect the service. You see, why is reign so important? Because we're living in a day and in an age where many people's lives are barren. They may be smiling, but they're their lives are barren. They may have money, but their lives are barren. They may drive a Mercedes, a Porsche, a Bentley, but their lives are barren. And in the, and because their lives are barren, the only way that they can become fruitful is to be exposed to rain. So when the church begins to invite people, invite your friends, invite your family, regardless of their issue, and you bring them to church, they may come in barren, but if we're doing our job and we're worshiping like we should worship, we're praising God like we should praise him we create an atmosphere for the reign and the glory of God and the anointing of God to begin to descend in that building what in and in that meeting the rain begins to impact those people such that their barren lives the rain begins to soften the hardness of their hearts soften the hardness of their minds such that revival can take place in their life renewal can take place in their life that they can experience something that they have not experienced before when they come to the house of of God. We're supposed to bring the rain. Now step two, the rain begins to descend and people can be in an environment where we're worshipping and they can sense the atmosphere. You know, people, whilst we are physical people, we are first spiritual. That's why when we were in the club, we could sense when the atmosphere was changing, when certain music's dropped because music is spiritual and music is vibrations and our spirit picks up on it. And so people can be in a church service where the anointing is moving and they can sense that there's a presence here and there's a power here but they don't yet fully understand what they're feeling and what they're experiencing and therefore that's why we need the sun in our service that's why we need the preaching of the word because the bible says how can they be saved unless they have a preacher why because the preacher brings illumination the preaching of the word brings revelation the word messages that we're meant to preach are supposed to be anointed and powerful to open up people's eyes to understand the very atmosphere that they're in and when the word is preached and the revelation goes forth that allows the person to get an understanding of what is happening in the service but even greater than that understanding who is really in the service so when the worship when the worship comes and the word is preached the rainbow being God himself is revealed and then they get an understanding that the, the one behind the rain the one behind this anointing the one behind this atmosphere is God himself the one who's given revelation when the word is being preached it's God Almighty that's given the revelation through a preacher so they get a connection with the one who is behind the rainbow hallelujah so the rainbow it doesn't represent diversity of sexuality but the rainbow when you look at the story it really represents mercy because God said I will no longer bring the flood upon the earth to destroy the inhabitants even though they were behaving wickedly. He said, um, he said, I will not allow that to happen again. So God now showed mercy. He showed mercy to Noah and to his family. But understand this, at this point there was a transition because now God moved away from the destruction that he had just previously allowed and now he focuses on his redemptive plan. And that's why he saved Moses as a sign point to say that, look, I don't desire to kill humanity. It's not my intention to do that. I really want to save humanity. He remembered what he said uh, back in Genesis chapter 1 when he spoke about there will be one who would come who's, um, who's the, the head of the serpent was bruise his heel. He knew that he had a redemptive plan for humanity. So now, I want to take it a step further in understanding the rainbow. And if you want to really understand the rainbow, you've got to understand the significance of the rainbow's colours. I said that the rainbow represents God himself. Now to understand this, let's now begin to go into the colours. The rainbow is made up of seven particular colours. You have red, uh, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo and purple. 
Now, within the rainbow, you have what, what's referred to as three primary colors, and then you have the four secondary colors. Now, I want to focus in on the three primary colors. The three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Now, why are these primary colors? These are primary colors because no other mixture of colors creates these colors. Okay? That's why they are primary. So, firstly, let's talk about red. Red, the, uh, the word red actually comes from the Hebrew word udem, and it's the root word for mankind. The name Adam also derives from that same Hebrew word udem. Now spiritually, red represents the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So the next time you see a rainbow and you see the red in the rainbow, it should serve as a reminder of you of what Jesus Christ did for you and I. That his blood that was shed was the payment for the sins that we could not pay ourselves. Then we come to the color yellow. Yellow represents gold, taken from the uh, Hebrew word charutz. And gold represents the sovereignty of God. Understand that the God that we serve is sovereign. The Bible says in the beginning, God, that word God is the word Elohim, supreme God. God is sovereign. Hallelujah. So now we get to the color blue. And blue represents the heavens, the healing power of God, and the word of God. Now this word blue is actually taken from the Hebrew word uh, tekelet. I repeat, tekelet. And this was the color that was assigned to the priest's clothing at the hem of the garment. Do you remember in the Bible when we read the story of the woman with the issue of blood? Had the issue for was it how, um, however many years? And then when she saw Jesus passing by, being a woman of, of, of Israel, she understood the, 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 uh, the traditions of, of the time tabernacle would have understood the traditions of the priestly garments and should have understood that the bottom of the priestly garments was blue. So that's the word tequilet. So now she says in her heart, if I but may just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Why did she want to touch the hem of his garment? She was trying to touch the blue, the tequilet. Why the tequilet? Because when she touched the hem of his garment, she was touching the heavens. When she touched the hem of his garment, she was touching the the healing power of God. So now she was looking at it from a natural perspective, understanding that the priest had blue on the hem of the garment, but Jesus wasn't just a priest. Jesus is our high priest. So now when she crawled through the crowd, bearing in mind, she could have just said, if I may touch his arm, if I may touch his chest, if I may touch his back, but no, she was specific. She said, no, I must touch the hem. I must touch the heavens. I must touch the healing power of God because if I can touch the heavens, I can be made whole. Hallelujah. So now the secondary colors, we come, to, we come to green, made by, and green is made by mixing yellow and blue together. And green represents uh, restoration, it represents life, and it represents resurrection. In Psalm chapter 1 verse 3, it says, He shall be uh, like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. And note this, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now a leaf what color are leaves when they, um, when they bud and when they flourish? They are green. Hallelujah. So now we come to orange. Orange is made by mixing yellow and red together. And this represents the fire of God and deliverance. The Bible says that our God is a consuming fire. It was his fire that consumed the fire of Nebuchadnezzar and that brought about deliverance to the three Hebrew boys. And now we come to purple, made by mixing red and blue. And purple represents royalty, majesty, and priesthood. Jesus is our high priest. And, but, but, more than, but more than that, he died a man, but you, sorry, excuse me. Jesus is our high priest, but more than that, he died as a man, but we now know him as our resurrected king. Remember, he died as a man. He lived as a man. Why? Because he had to live as a man and die as a man to pay the penalty for our sins. But after he died, he went to the gate grave for three days. But after three days, the Bible tells us that he was resurrected and brought back to life. When you look through the life of Jesus Christ, you see the colors of the rainbow. Because you see that even whilst he walked in the earth, he knew who 
who he truly was. He knew he was sovereign. He knew he was royalty. He knew he was God. That's the color yellow in his life. He knew also that he was a priest. And not only was he a priest, but he was our high priest. That's the color purple in Jesus' life. Then we look at the red, and he knew that he had to go to the cross. That's why even when he was in Gethsemane, and he was under so much oppression and pressure, and the blood was pouring, and his sweat became like blood. And he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. He knew he couldn't let the cup pass because he knew he had to let his blood be shed in order for our sins to be paid for. When we look at the life of Jesus Christ and how he operated in, in ministry, he was like a consuming fire. Wherever he went, he had the impact. And you know, one thing we know about fire, whatever fire touches, it has an effect and it has an impact. That's why crowds came from everywhere to see Jesus. Because wherever Jesus went, he had an effect. He had an impact. That's the color orange operating in his life. And then when we look at him, we know that we see the color green because he said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father except by me. And no other person has gone to the grave and been resurrected until Jesus was first resurrected. So we see the colors of the rainbow in the life of Jesus Christ. And that's why I say the rainbow still belongs to God. Any other community can take it and they can do what they want with the rainbow. But the rainbow still belongs to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the next time you see the rainbow in the cloud, you should get encouragement. Because if you're sick in your body, you can see the color blue. And remember that blue represents the healing power of God in the heavens. And that you have access to it. And if you just have faith and continue to believe God, you can be made whole just like the woman with the issue of blood. Ah, The next time you see the red, you can remember the blood. The enemy may be trying to make you feel down about where you are. May try, make, may try to make you feel like you can never come out of your situation. But if you see the red in the rainbow, you remember that there is a blood that was shed for you that can wash you that can cleanse you that can renew you that can revive you that can turn your life around a blood that was shed to pay the price of your sin it doesn't matter what you've done it doesn't matter how bad it is it doesn't matter what people have said about you the blood was shed for you so when you see the red in the rainbow remember the blood hallelujah and when you see the purple, you know, you look at the purple and you may say, well, I'm in church and I'm saved, but I can't really do nothing. Don't forget that in the purple, you've got a high priest who is making intercession for you. And not only is he a high priest for you, but also that you have a ministry. You have something to do. And I want to submit this to you. Even as we look at the rainbow and we get a revelation of who God is, you should get a revelation of the rainbow in you. The colors of the rainbow should be manifested in your life. The blood of Jesus should be seen in your life the healing power of God should be seen in your life the priesthood of God your ability to minister and be used by God the purple should be seen in your life the resurrection power of God should be seen in your life that people could say the way they used to be they're no longer that way anymore because there is a resurrection that has happened in their life that they look different they're, they're, they're not the same as, as, as what they used to be because you've had an encounter with the one who created the rainbow and one thing that everyone can agree on is a rainbow is beautiful. And when you encounter God and you encounter his goodness and all that he has and he begins to transform your life, there'll be a rainbow in your life that makes your life just look beautiful. Hallelujah. And I need to stop, but I want to encourage every person the rainbow still belongs to God. Never look at it the same again. It's just a beautiful thing that's in the sky, that's in the sky and it's in the clouds. But when you look at the rainbow, remember what Jesus has done for you. Remember what God has done in your life. Hallelujah. And we give him the glory. And as a church, ha shadabu hosa. Whenever we get to come back and have church like we normally do in our normal fashion, come with a mindset knowing 
that when I come to service, I'm going to worship in such a way that's going to cause it to rain in the house. And then for the preacher that's going to come and preach on the Sunday, come with a mindset to say, I'm going to preach the word with everything that I've got, with every bit of revelation and illumination God has given me, such that the rainbow, such that God would be revealed to people in the service that do not know him, that they would look at him and they would say, my gosh, this God is beautiful. The blood that was shed for me is beautiful. His, 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 his kingship and his lordship, he is beautiful that they would want to know him for themselves. Hallelujah. So at this time, I'd just like to pray for anybody that's viewing right now. I just want to pray for you. If through this message, you recognize, man, I may have been going to church, but I didn't understand the rainbow. I didn't understand the God behind the rainbow, the one who was behind everything that was happening in the service. I didn't recognize God's hand in my life and how he's been keeping me and saving me from so many things. I just want to pray for you that you would come into a new place of covenant with God, that his mercy, his grace, his transformative power would minister to you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just bring before your throne Every person watching this stream right now and those who would watch it retrospectively, Father God, as we've spoken the revelation of the rainbow, that it reveals you, God Almighty, yourself. Father God, we pray that people will have an encounter with you, that they will counter every aspect of who you are, every color of the rainbow and the spiritual significance behind it, that they would encounter it, Father, in their lives. The shed blood of Christ, hallelujah. The fact that you're our intercessor and you're our high priest interceding for us, Father God. The fact that you're our king and our Lord and that you have control over our lives. The fact that you, have, uh, uh, that you are a consuming fire that not only gives gives us the Holy Ghost, but also gives us the Holy Ghost with fire. That, Father God, that they would count, encounter your life, Father God. That you are a renewer, that you are a restorer, that you can resurrect the most dry and dead situations. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name that they would come to the knowledge of this truth and that they would surrender their lives to you in Jesus' name. And we give you thanks for this, Father, and we give you praise in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being with us this week, and we look forward to seeing you next week at the same time at 2.15. In Jesus' name, amen.